Well, happy Saturday, everybody, and glad you could be with us for the tire edition of Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, the automotive therapist, here along with Matt Allen, the KTR car guy, here to help you with your car every Saturday from 11 to noon, right here on News Talk 92.3 KTAR, putting you in the know when it comes to car stuff, stuff, and we hope you give us a call at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, nitrogen tire fill, open phones, tires, 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 tires. Did I mention tires? Today we brought in the experts to help us help you with tires. Well, and today we've got truly the tire experts who have actually three of the Bumper to Bumper radio shops are the Slagles from SNS Tire with stores in Peoria, Goodyear, Sun City, and if you have tires on your car, which I'm pretty sure you do, <laughs> if you're out <laughs> driving around, this is the show that you're going to want to tune into, listen to, learn about tires, and if you have questions, certainly call in, because again, the experts are here. Bob, Rob, <laughs> Dan, <laughs> everybody, tell us a little bit more about SNS Tire, the history of SNS Tire, and w- what got you here today. I'll start off, and then I'll throw it Dan's way. Um, my father started our company in the West Valley about 37 years ago, and it's truly a family-run business, uh, three generations. Uh, my sons are in the stores today working. Um, my dad's working. We're working. Everybody's working. So um, we, uh, we pride ourselves in being um, you know, with our customers, who many customers are our friends, and um, we're there to solve their problems with uh, regards to their cars and tires. Well, and it's just not car tires. What I'm amazed with when we were at your shops and your facilities, you have golf cart tires, ATV tires. I know I'm missing something. You, if it is brown and black, you've probably got it, right? That's that's correct. I I think we're probably the uh, go-to guys in the valley for everything round and black. <laughs> well, I think we're talking about tires, and people are, you know, what kind of tires should I have in my car? It could be intimidating. I see advertisements for tires, and this guy's going to go three tires. You get the fourth one free. Is that a place I want to go buy tires? Maybe walk us through the experience of coming to your shop. I know I want to buy tires for my car. It's really overwhelming if I go to think about it. How am I going to know what tire I should be putting in my car? And that's where you guys come in. Well, there's a lot of factors when you're buying tires, uh, you know, what you're doing in your car, whether you're uh, hauling kids around or pulling boats or um – there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that go into that, and you need to make sure you buy the right tire for for what you plan to use it for. Well, and that's something you guys help walk people through the process of. I mean, I've seen the the kind of the tire shop example where you go in and and uh, they say we got A, B, or C. Which one do you want? And I don't know if that's really what you want, you know. And I, I the thing I like about your shops is if we can get the experience. You're going to walk out to the car, ask them a lot of questions, see what they're doing with the car, because there's things like speed rating. You know, do you guys know if you have a V and H or a T or an S speed rating on your tire? As a consumer, you probably have no idea. Um, and then the other thing is we talk about tread life. You hear a lot of, oh, we got an 80,000-mile tire. Well, an 80,000-mile tire from a Michelin is one thing, but an 80,000-mile tire from an Acme brand may be another thing. So what should a consumer have in mind? And you're saying, what, what tire is right for my use and what I do with the vehicle? Well, I think, yeah, you have to uh, qualify uh, each customer and, and find out exactly, you know, what they're using their vehicles for. And um, that starts, you know, when the customer walks into the into the showroom, uh, take a walk out to the car and uh, pay attention to the details. Do they have a tow hitch on the on the vehicle or um, the the little things? I mean, in, in you know, we talk about uh, weight rating on the tires. So there's a uh, B, C, D, load ranges? Yeah, I well, can't even keep up with the, all this. It's the attention to the detail that you have to remember. People say, oh, look at the big picture. Well, we do look at the big picture, but it's the attention to the detail that makes the big picture look good. So that's why they're doing things. You're looking at the – you're going to look at – do they have a trailer hitch? Maybe they're using this vehicle for towing. Look at the tire. Why is the tire need to be replaced? Is it horribly worn out? We may be seeing into the – we're using that tire as a uh, – a, a tail of a tattletale, maybe it's the tire's going to let us know that maybe you have an alignment issue we need to address. So, putting a just putting the tire on the car and walking away and say, Here's your new tires, have a good day. That isn't always the best case. It, you may see them back 
needing a new tire again if we don't address the alignment issues. And I think that's stuff you're looking at as well when you're consulting them about tires, right? That's correct, Matt. And the other thing that uh, does happen at our store, believe it or not, that someone may come in thinking they need tires. They're not ready yet. We'll tell them that. Our people are uh, salary. They're not commission-based. So, you know, they don't have to sell that set of tires to put, you know, food on the table. If they don't need tires, we're going to tell them they don't need tires. Right. And it's just, what do I need? And there's a few things. And what can consumers do, I guess? So we've identified that we need new tires. And we've and we've and you've helped us choose which tires we need for our car. Now we may or may not need an alignment if the tires are wearing nice and even. Probably is not something that we need to concern about, be too concerned about with. But I would assume we're always going to check and see what the what the front end feels like if its car's pulling or anything like that. And then we need to take care of the tires moving forward. So pressures are important, and you get that information off the tire placard, which is on the driver's door door frame, to understand the size, the pressure rating, the speed rating, and all of that stuff. But what other tips are there for the consumers to really understand, A, I guess when you need a tire, but then making sure that those tires last maybe that 60 or 70 or 80,000 miles that they possibly could? The uh, win question is uh, probably twofold, especially in our area in the southwest desert. Uh, number one is the tread depth, and every tire has tread depth indicators marked on the side of the tire that show you where in the tread where where the, the, the tire wears down to a certain point, it's time. And that's basically, on a car tire, it's 230 seconds typically. The other thing is time. Um, manufacturers say 10 years. Uh, that's probably true in other parts of the country. I think in this environment, six is probably more realistic or even five. And I, I've read a little bit about that lately, and it's it's just really, truly all over the board. The, there is no s- federally mandated specification, that, and they're trying to figure that out. I think the Italians have one thing, and England, they have another. So I guess the U.S. is a little behind in that, but it's good because we're trying to figure out what exactly is right. Right. The other recommendation I'd like to make to someone that's uh, – in the market is try to buy someone that turns product fairly often. In other words, sells a lot of tires. You don't Mm -hmm. want to buy tires that are already two, three, four years old. And that sometimes that is the case. I mean, the tires do have a shelf life. So you want to buy somebody that's, you know, moving, moving tires on a pretty consistent basis. So you buy some fresh stuff. It's kind of like not going to a slow restaurant, you know, (laughs) (laughs) you don't get the leftover uh, tacos or whatever. Right. (laughs) For sure. What do you What do you guys see as maybe the most common uh, misconception people have about tires when they're in the shop? Is there anything that comes to mind? I mean, you know, tire balance alignment. The difference between that. We or? we see a lot of tires uh, vehicles that come into our shop with tires that are worn uneven. The back ones uh, are you know in really good condition, and the front ones are worn down quite a bit. That's typically from lack of rotation. Uh, we recommend rotating them every oil change or 5,000 miles, and uh, that's uh, that, that'll that definitely help contribute um, to the life of the tire. One of the big questions I get is, and we don't do a lot of tires at my shop. We do it as a convenience to customers where we were talking about before the show. That's your business. It's tires, and that's what makes you the experts. But one of the things I get, and we'll talk about the price of a tire, and people go, wow, that's, that's expensive. And the tire technology, the sizes have changed. There's way more sizes now than there used to be. But I'll say, well, that's a speed-rated tire. It's rated for, a, I don't know, 105 miles an hour. And people say, well, I don't drive that fast. I, I don't even go on the freeway. I only go 60 miles an hour maybe. Do, I don't need that tire. And it's important, I think, to stay with the speed rating of the tire, right? But there are, I guess, some special circumstances where we may deviate from that. We don't deviate very often. Uh, the The reason that car has a certain load index and speed rating on it, which you'll find on the sidewall of the tire, is because the car was engineered around those tires. There was a lot of money spent and time with engineers trying to figure out, you know, what what's the best you know, the way that that car is going to handle with a specific tire on it. So we typically always try to stay with the, with the same that's on there. There are situations where, you know, maybe someone only drives their car 2000 miles a year and maybe they don't need a 150 mile an hour speed rated tire on their car, but they need to realize that if they deviate from that, that the, uh, the car will not handle the same. It will handle differently. I bet there's some people out in Sun City that you probably put 
tires more frequently on their golf carts than you do on their, <laughs> on their cars, right? <laughs> That's pretty regular. So, you know, the thing we've gone a lot faster on the freeways than we used to be. So things like speed rating are a bigger deal. 75 miles an hour, we're not doing 55 anyway. Tire towing inflation, tire rotation, tire shelf life, speed rating, alignment, tire balance. We've got open phones taking your tire questions at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. You are listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we've got a couple guests in the studio, the tire experts. We've got Dan Slagle and Rob Slagle from SNS Tire. We've got three shops out in the West Valley, and we are here taking tire questions and any question, really, for that matter. There are a couple of the great shops that you find at BumperToBumperRadio.com. We've got also a couple new shops at BumperToBumperRadio.com. We've got Central Car Care, uh, who just, uh, it's been a, it's a relationship I have had for a long time with Paul. Well, we've uh, known Paul a long time, and, and if any of your listeners remember, a year or so ago in the summer, we had his son on. We had his son on. His son was one of the finalists for the Ford Student Auto Skills Program and got to go to D.C. and everything, so he's uh, he's he's training the second generation, unlike the Slagles with the third generation in the shop now. The other one we got in North Scottsdale, we've got uh, Air Park Auto Service, Nadine and her group up there. So great, one of the other great shops at bumper to bumper radio dot com. So um, <laughs> wow, that was painful. <laughs> you love those sounds. That scared me, Dave. Like, I wonder how many people are right now at the stoplight looking around. <laughs> I brought that in just for the guys. So up first this segment, we've got a call from Dave in Sun City. Looks like Dave's got a tire question, maybe for a golf cart. I don't know. Go ahead, Dave. You're on bumper oh, to bumper no, radio. Oh no, no golf cart. <laughs> um, how advisable would it be to, when I buy a new set of tires, to at least have an alignment check? Well, that absolutely. I mean, that's what we talked about before in the beginning is is the old tires are going to tell you a lot about what's happening with the car. So it's it's definitely a good idea to have an alignment check and Rob, what do you? What's, how's um, the procedure at your shop at SNS Tire Works? Well, what we do is we recommend an alignment check with every tire purchase. It's free, and uh, there's no obligation to the customer. We'll put it on our lift, check the re- uh, readings. We'll actually hand them a printout showing whether it's in or out, and if they would like to fix it, we'll fix it. If they don't want to fix it, then the car goes off the rack and they're done. So that's what we do. I, one of the common misconceptions I see is tire balance and alignment. People say, oh, I need to get a... I need to get a uh, alignment on my car because it's wobbling, uh, wobbling, shaking, yeah. right? Yeah, we get that. But there's a lot. there's tire balance, and that's you know the rotation of your tire, and they put weights on either side of the tire to make it balance out and match the wheel to the tire. Now alignment is really getting the the wheels all running true down the road. So two different things. Yeah, two different things. And I don't know. And I imagine that in your shops it's the same way. You get people that come in and go, "Oh, I need an alignment," and you go out and look, and their right front tire is ten pounds lower than the left front. And that's causing the car to pull. So uh, the tires can affect a lot of things on the car, and definitely an alignment check and an alignment is a good idea when you're when you're getting your tires. Well, thanks so much for the call, Dave. We're going to go with Dan in Buckeye with a tire question. Go ahead, Dan. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. How are we doing today? Great. Great. Good. Good. Hey, what kind of maintenance do you recommend that I do to the tires on my motorhome, which actually sits more than it drives? Danny, I'll throw that your way. Yeah, I think uh, the best thing you can do is keep the uh, keep the sidewalls clean. Um, you don't want to necessarily use a lot of uh, protectants and stuff uh, on sidewalls of tires. Like tire shines, right? Exactly. Um, it, it, the rubber needs to breathe a little bit. Um, and just uh, keep the air pressure up. I think if they uh, sit uh, for long periods of time and without being checked and they uh, tend to go flat uh i think they it's important that the air pressure is checked on a regular basis even if you're not using the vehicle i'm gonna throw a couple other ideas out there i'd keep the direct sun off of them that's what i was thinking and too, yeah. and on my rv i always park it on a you know a piece of plywood try to get the tires on a piece of plywood if it's going to sit more than two three four months it kind of insulates between you know if it's a if it's a uh paved lot where it's kind of rough uh, you know, during a storm, that thing's going to move and rock. And sometimes we've seen where, you know, it actually imp- makes the the rubber. Well, I didn't even think about that, but I could imagine you're parked on the asphalt or on the side of your house, maybe, or in a storage center, and that asphalt in the summertime is 
what, a couple hundred degrees maybe, yeah. 180 degrees in the direct sunlight, that's going to transfer through, through and go right into the tire. So that I've, I've never even considered that, having a piece of plywood. That would act as a good barrier there. Are you guys big fans of tire conditioners? Like you get the car wash, they shine them up, they look good. Uh, when my car goes through the car wash, I tell them, uh, you know, I, I thanks, but no thanks. I don't need that stuff on the tires. Yeah, you know what I do sometimes? I put it on before I go to the car wash, nice and shiny. Because what I hate, besides, it, many times it's a petroleum product. Everybody knows petroleum and rubber eh, don't mix. So it, if you're putting a, a petroleum product on your tire, it is, it is degrading it ever so slightly maybe. But I, I like to put it on, then they wash it off. That way it doesn't end up over the side of the car exactly. <laughs> too. But. Well, let's see if we can sneak in Jason in Queen Creek on a 06 Scion with a tire question. Go ahead, Jason. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Thank you. Hey, I'm going to try and keep it brief and short with you guys. I've got this 06 Scion that I've had since I bought new. And uh, as you guys know, on the Scions, you can do your semi-custom build from the dealership. It came with the 16-inch rims from the from the dealer it runs a 205 50 16 on the tires um i'm at ninety thousand miles on this um i've gone through four sets of tires um <clears throat> i've gone with the michelins i've gone with the bfgs um some of the research that i've done shows these cars go out of alignment constantly every time i've had a new set of tires on the vehicle my alignment seems you know and i've gone to pretty reputable dealers around the valley i won't say any names but um they always check the alignment. Nothing is wrong, but the car continues to pull to the left, no matter what road you're driving on, anything. And it just it, it tends to chew up the tires. So I didn't know if maybe you guys knew of uh, anything with these vehicles that, that they have this problem. I, I, I've been told that they're constantly out of alignment, but but my car always shows that it's in alignment. Jason, what, what model Scion is it that you have? It's the XB. XB. The box. Okay. Jason, um, I, here's a, just a couple things. You might have already tried this, but, uh, you know, those are low-profile tires. The sidewalls are probably an inch high or something like that. And right. air pressure uh, is of the utmost importance because you, you cannot tell when the tires are low. They could be 10 pounds low, and they look exactly the same as if they're fully inflated. So I'd recommend whatever the, the placard says, and I'd check it monthly and uh, rotate them. Just rotate them uh, often. You guys haven't seen typical typical problems with that vehicle getting out of alignment that didn't quite not necessarily no i haven't seen it that is a hard vehicle on tires though it's hard on tires and that's because yeah. it can flip flip a u-turn in like one parking space but i think there's some other things we'll talk about with jason when we come back we'll we'll, uh, we'll expand on that topic a little bit more with with ninety thousand miles we need to be starting to consider things like shocks struts possibly and, and we'll talk a little bit more about alignments. When we come back, we'll hit on nitrogen tire inflation. We're taking your calls at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen. And today we are talking tires with the experts from SNS Tire. We've got Dan and Rob Slagle. Talking about tires, and Matt, you wanted to touch on that last phone call from Jason on the Scion. Well, yeah, Jason had 2006 Scion with 90,000 miles, and I think he said he's been through four sets of tires. And we were talking a little bit off the air, and he was telling me that he was even, he's gone to the extreme of, well, let me back up a little bit. He's gone through four sets of tires, and he, whenever he gets an alignment or gets new tires, the car is still pulling to the left. He's gone to the extreme of, inflating the left side tire all the way to 50 pounds and lowering the right side tire just to try and, you know, you could do that as a diagnosis. As we mentioned earlier, people come in thinking they need an alignment, and really they just have their tire pressures off. But a couple things I'm thinking about on Jason's car, actually three things. The tire wear, that particular tire size, is typically what we call a performance tire. It's going to be a high traction, low tread wear because it's a sticky tire, if you will. There are some manufacturers that have recognized that people just are not getting the life they need out of these tires, and they've gone to a more moderate performance, but still that size for the the bling, I guess you will. We all know the Scion's not on, on the racetrack and going 115 miles an hour or something like that tire might be designed for. The other thing is the suspension. I'm sure if the car wore out tires in 20,000 miles, it had absolutely nothing to do with the original struts and shocks. But now is a time in 90,000 miles where you may consider, depending on the ride, it does have an effect on the stopping ability and the, and the handling of the car. 
but more importantly is, is the alignment. And you can do an alignment, and these alignment machines are all computerized today, and they have red and green. Green is obviously good and red is bad. So a lot of alignment technicians, they will just make the adjustments until they turn green and say it's in spec. And it may be in spec, but it's not a alignment that's set to make your car drive straight. Correct. I agree. And some of these cars, you know, you have to add kits or cams or something to get them perfect. And it just depends on how much the pull is is bothering you. It may or may not be worth the extra expense. Yeah, and there's some cars we need to add eccentrics. I mean, we've got to put adjustment shims or, or, or parts in the back to take what is otherwise not a factory adjustment and make it adjustable. Uh, a lot of cars, BMW, for example, you've got to put weight in the car. You've got 80 pounds here and 60 pounds over here. So a lot of that stuff, it really needs to be dialed down and not just, I would say, dumbed down to red or green. It's th- down to the number. I think you're making it way too complicated. You know what I think Jason's problem was? <laughs> Guy drives like a maniac. You love of course, he's wearing sound- out tires. You love your sound <laughs> effects, Dave. Come on now. <laughs> So, no, that's really good stuff. So let's go with, uh, looks like Chip in Gilbert on a 2001 Tacoma. Go ahead, Chip. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, 2001 uh, Tacoma Pre-Runner. Uh, it's got the 3.4, and I bought it uh, in, in March last year, a little over 40,000 miles on it. Um, it's throwing a 440 code, which is uh, EVAP system. And my mechanic has said, well, and he hasn't done a whole lot of diagnostics on this particular code, but uh, he's talking about something called a rollover valve. And just wanted to get a little insight on what you uh, gentlemen might think about that uh, 440 code and the best way to uh, approach getting that repaired. Well, there's a the 440 is pretty common in a lot of cars, and it's an evaporative system leak, or you know, it could be a minor leak or a gross leak, but. It's an evaporative system, and, and that fuel tank is sealed. They don't want any vapors getting out of the fuel because that's hydrocarbons, which is pollution. So there's a series of tests that the car is always doing to itself to test to make sure that it's working properly. And when it's not, bam, there goes the check engine light. So with that code, there's a series of tests. We need to check that sometimes what we're finding on the Toyotas is that the electronically the valve works. So we test it. We measure the resistance and that all works good. The computer thinks it's working well because it's controlling it, but mechanically the switch or the solenoid is not working properly. It may stick open or closed. The computer thinks it's closed. It's not. It's flowing air. It knows that it's flowing vapors, and it will turn on the light. Sometimes, that, I mean, that's a low-mileage car, too, and which really doesn't have – it's not a wear and tear item that you would typically get with mileage. It's more of time. Uh, sometimes there's a reprogramming issue on those. We check them with, we pressurize the system with smoke, and we call it a smoke test, and we're looking for the leak. But they're not always external leaks. It could be internal through the hoses. Well, explain to me what the heck is a rollover valve. That was the piece he was asking about. Well, you're putting me on the spot I now, am. Dave. I don't know the exact. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, there's the rollover valve, so when if the car actually is in an accident and tip over, it's not spilling fuel. That could be part of it. And it's, then, Maybe and it's a check valve in the vent system so yeah. the fluid doesn't run into the... Exactly. And and they're, sometimes they're very easy to diagnose, and sometimes they're not. You just have to do a series of tests. And, and a lot of the time, there's no access to the top of the fuel tank. All this stuff is on the top of the fuel tank. Then the tank is lifted up and bolted into the truck or the car. So it's sandwiched in between the bed or the trunk, and you just it's simply the access to it that makes it expensive to repair, not necessarily the parts or the components. That's the most common code that I hear people ignore and just let the, the yellow light run on their their check engine light just run because they say, well, you know, I was in the shop. They said it's just an emissions code and not to worry about it. Uh, the problem with that is that, you know, that check engine light comes on for 250 different reasons. So it now may you be You just for... made that number up. I, <laughs> I know <did>. that. <laughs> 70% of all statistics are made up just before they're given. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, so there's, there, there's, it needs to be addressed, but the, the frustrating thing, I think, for the consumer is that sometimes it's not just one trip to the shop. So you may go in and they say, let's start with the gas cap. That's the easiest thing. You know, gas caps, decade old. You know, the rubber gets old in them. It's, let's throw it on there. It's a good guess. And you need it anyway. So start there. And, you know, it may not run. The, the vehicle may not run that test, you know, for another week or two. It has to have all the right parameters, the right, you know, atmospheric pressure, uh, the right amount of fuel in the gas tank. And some people never get that test to run, so it won't set forever and ever. And then the light comes on, and you think, well, did they miss something? 
Right. No, I think it's the shops. We always want to have the fast answer, and we want to get you your car back in one day. But some of those those type of codes, it's a it's a two day operation, or you can be part of the the testing process and drive it and see when it when it comes on again. But you should definitely have it fixed. There's the notion that to ignore it is is bad, even though that's not what he said to ignore it. But it, it's something that needs to be fixed, and it, it takes some experience and the right tools. 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. We're going to go with Dave in Phoenix on a 2004 Silverado. Go ahead, Dave. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. How are hey, you? Thanks. Um, I just had my oil changed in my uh, Silverado, which is a Joe Gibbs uh, performance special. And... Uh, it always ran around 40 to 50 pounds um, pressure on the oil gauge. Now it's been pegged at 80. And it, when you shut the, the engine off, it goes, the gauge goes back to zero. And when you fire it up, it goes right to 80 pounds max on the gauge. And uh, uh, I don't know what's causing that. I figured to ask you guys and see if you had any kind of input on that. Dave, as the truck warms up, does that pressure gauge stay pegged at 80, or does it come down some? It, it stays pegged at 80 all the time. It's been going on now for about uh, two, three weeks. Okay. What if you what if you don't start the engine, but you just turn the key to the on position to where the radio's on and the you know the gas gauge is reading? What does the gauge do then? It goes right to 80. Probably a pretty simple fix. What you have there is an oil pressure sending unit down on the engine. And oftentimes it's right next to the oil, oil filter. filter. So if this yep. happened right after the oil change, it, it may be worth going, well, it's always worth going back to the shop and having them take take a quick look. But you have an oil pressure sensor down there, and that's just a, a transponder. It's going to send a signal or some information to the computer or to the instrument cluster. And that's going to, there's a predetermined program that whatever voltage signal it sends back means it has 40 pounds or 30 pounds or 80 pounds. Well, probably what's happened is that switch is either internally shorted out and is shorted to ground, and therefore it's turning on that light or making the gauge peg all the way, especially when you said it does it with the engine not started. Um, they could have pinched a wire possibly that leads back to the computer or back to the cluster that's causing that to come on, it, or it could be just purely coincidental that the oil pressure gauge went out and, and and you just replace the sending unit more than likely. The other thing it could be is those GMC or Chevrolet trucks are famous for the instrument cluster going out. But you oh, usually have a tachometer going wacky or a speedometer. More than one, just one thing. The coincidence yeah. to the oil change is, is, is definitely worth Suspect that wire got knocked loose. So. Yeah, or, or pinched more than pinched. likely. So probably a simple inspection would, would take care of that. And, and if you use just an oil change shop, maybe it's time to check out one of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper radio shops. But And if you have a technician or a shop that you're used to working with just by all means stay there if you're happy with them though that's the important part of having the relationship thanks for the call dave we're going to go with bob in litchfield park looks like he's got a tire question go ahead bob you're on bumper to bumper radio yeah guys thanks for taking my call i'm uh my vehicle needs two tires uh is it okay to put just two on and should i put them on the front or the rear well, that is uh, you know, a topic that we just recently wrote a blog on KTR.com about was, was, was tires and, and, and how many to replace. But this is up to tire experts, Sally, so have at it. Our industry says that the new tires should go on the rear almost in every situation. And I know that sounds crazy because that goes against everything we've been doing for the last 50 years or whatever. But there's been uh, studies and uh, it's been proven that in uh, some climate conditions with the new tires on the front, you can lose control. And um, it, that that is a serious situation. Now, we typically will educate our customer about, you know, our industry standards and let them decide. Typically, when you lose control, uh, it has been when there's been a lot of moisture on the ground, a lot of rain and so forth. We don't get a lot of that around here. So, you know, we recommend industry standards, but you know, we can deviate from that a little bit. For sure. And his question was, can I just buy two? And uh, back to your blog point was that a lot of times, unless you have an all-wheel drive, there's nothing wrong with just buying two at a time, per se. No, not at all. And I don't like buying one. I mean, unless you're matching a tread design, maybe you have a new tire and you just happen to get a puncture or something, one, one is okay in those circumstances, but typically two, and like Dave said, all-wheel drive, you should, should be definitely be doing four. But, you know, the mechanic in me, I always want to have the tires in the front because you do the alignment and now it rides good. But you have the old tires in the front, you do the alignment, maybe it doesn't ride as well. So I, I internally 
uh, grapple with that, but it's that's a very good question. Well, we had an email this week at bumper to bumper radio dot com from Shelley, and she was concerned. You know, uh, her car came with nitrogen in the tires, and her friend says you got to go to a nitrogen filling station or somebody does nitrogen to get those tires serviced. And her concern was, do I need to do that, or can I just pull by the uh, gas station, juice it up myself? What do you think, Dan? Well, I think that uh, you definitely, if you get yourself into a situation and your tire needs air, you can definitely add just regular air to the nitrogen uh, that's already in it. Uh, but you lose the effectiveness of the nitrogen once you add uh, just regular air. Well, the thing we we should have done factor fiction, Dave. We could have had we got you know a lot of people in here. We could have we haven't done that in a while. But you got to remember you're dre- you're breathing seventy eight point some odd percent nitrogen right now anyway. So the whole purpose of putting nitrogen in the tires is over time it will help maintain the pressure in the tires. You don't lose it. The, the molecules don't leak out as much, and, and it's just a clean constant pressure. So over time, not maybe this oil change or the next oil change, but over the life cycle of a tire, you're going to maintain constant pressure. It's going to help fuel mileage, help tire. But no, you can just top well, it off. There's, and then... there's, a, there's a lot of debate in our industry, whether we do nitrogen or don't do nitrogen. Is it just smoke and mirrors, something I don't really need? And your point the other day, you had that cab company that you're doing service work for them, and they've done the math, and it works out better for them to do nitrogen. So, well, I know we're not doing service work for them, but what I noticed, I was next to a cab the other day, very big cab company in town, and I've seen this more than once. There's a sticker. It says, right on, on all four corners above the tire, inflate to 35 PSI, nitrogen compressed air only. So I called the facilities maintenance or the maintenance shop at that cab company. I said, what's the deal with this? They said, over time, our tires last longer. They have more consistent pressures. I said, have you ever worked with cab drivers? They said, well, tow truck drivers sometimes. They don't take care of, you know, they're driving. That's what they they do for a living. And, and, And they're so busy, they don't really pay attention to the tires. But he did say, over time, it helps. And, and they've, they've proven it. They've done the math. Okay, when we come back, we're taking more calls. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen, and we've got Dan Slagle and Rob Slagle from SNS Tire in with us, taking your tire questions. There's also a silent guy in here. We've got Michael Henry with MBH Marketing in joining us and uh we we just turned his microphone off told him it didn't work <laughs> we, yeah we don't want to hear him anyway <laughs> but we were we were talking on the break about the nitrogen fill in the tires and there's kind of a debate going on and then uh rob brought something up that we totally missed and i think we let you guys down and it's tire pressure monitoring systems and tpms ti- tpms and they definitely like 100 percent pure nitrogen Better than compressed, wet, sloppy air out of the air compressor. Well, well, you know it's funny. Dave and I were talking. We're pl- we're doing a little bit of show notes, and it, we're getting planning. We're planning for the show, and Dave's like, "This is ten shows, and every time we touch on one thing, it's there's another topic, and and that's the one thing that that's those tire pressure monitoring systems rely on a pressure sensor that's inside the the wheel. It's usually part of the valve stem. Sometimes they're strapped on the inside of the wheel. Some cars don't use pressure at all. They just use the wheel speed sensor in a rolling diameter to determine that the tire may be low. But but we have you see problems with uh, wet compressed air out of out of shops. It gets in there and it can corrode that sensor. It can cause damage to the, to the sensor, make it not work right. Just all kinds of weird things. And so there are some benefits other than the minor tick up in fuel mileage that you might have, or not having ozone inside the tire, or some of the other. My, minor benefits and, and the other thing that you said you see sometimes is people with the fix a flat or something or? yeah the, you know the, i think in 2007 there was a 15 or 20 percent of the new vehicles manufactured were required to have tpms systems on board now i think that number is 90 or 95 percent so you want to stay away from that fix a flat if your car's got the tpms sensors on it because it'll ruin a sensor and those sensors Hundred bucks sometimes. At least in some cases. Yeah, they're, and we're starting to see now. We're starting to see the batteries failing in because it was around 2007. There was a mandate; they have to have a, some type of monitoring system now. And we're just starting to see all the battery failures in those little sensors. And you don't get to replace just the battery. Well, up the first this segment, we've got Mike in Mesa. Looks like he's got a tire question. Go ahead, Mike. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Yeah, my question is about uh, off-brand tires. A few months ago, I had a blowout in Texas, and I had to put the donut on and nurse it into a tire shop. And the guy comes rolling out with these tires called Good Ride. 
claiming they were made by Goodyear. And uh, so far they've been pretty good, but I've been worried about them ever since. I was wondering if you had any experience with, the, you know, the not the name brand type tires. It's a great, great question for our tire gurus. <laughs> I'm familiar with Good Ride. We don't happen to sell them. I uh, cannot... Um, I cannot deny or confirm the fact that they're made by Goodyear, but it is most likely an Asian made product. And they were, um, th you know, it, all tires today are of pretty good quality. Um, typically the benefit of buying a name brand over something that says good ride on it, as opposed to Goodyear is, you know, getting it serviced, you know, where do you go now if you need your tire serviced? And that's the big question. So, um, you know, typically if you do traveling, do some traveling, uh, we'd recommend staying with a name brand if you have that choice. That way if you, you have one blow out, you can pull in and they're going to have one to match that, exactly. that name brand tire. Well, I remember I, I started out in the tire business, busting tires, and I remember that there was different offshoots to the big name brand. You know, I worked for a, a Goodyear dealership, and once in a while we'd get a special batch of tires in different factory, and, and sometimes they were different. They weren't the same quality, so I don't know if that plays in at all. Well, you know, we talked about, a little bit about you can take, say, your 80,000-mile Michelin tire, and then in that tire, I'm just going to make up numbers. That's a $200 tire. It's 80,000. Everybody knows Michelin's a premium brand. But then you go over to, to Acme, and they have an 80,000-mile tire, and it's $72. Why, why is that Michelin ripping me off? So expensive. <laughs> well, you, then you now we're starting to get into stuff that's too much to cover on the show probably about the – the details and how to read the tire and what goes into that rating. I think it's a lot like batteries. You can just call it what you want. You just it's the the I'll I'll sell you an eighty thousand mile tire and then sell you a new one for half price when it wears out in forty thousand miles all all day long, right? I mean, there's 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 a lot more to it than just what it says eighty thousand miles. Yeah, the other thing you have to remember too is the premium brands. You know, when they're half worn, uh, they're going to provide the same or similar amount of traction. Uh, as the tire was when it was new. Some of the uh, generic Acme brands at half wear, they're not going to provide the same amount of traction and handling as it did when it was new. So there's a lot that goes into tires. It's, well, they it's, might degrade faster. Mm -hmm. It may be four for 100 but a good pair of shoes costs $100 anymore. We're going to sneak in Greg in Mesa. He's got a tire question. Go ahead, Greg. You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi. Uh, faster fiction question. I heard you guys uh -oh. talking about that a second ago. About 20, 25 years ago, a tire guy said, never, ever, ever under any circumstance pump a can of fix-a-flat into a tire because it could blow up or release toxins into the tire guy's face when he's changing out your tire. So that factor myth, don't ever use that stuff. I would say it's... Um I would say it's myth. I uh, you, you, when when you're changing a tire and and you uh, realize rather quickly that when they've added something to it because it is uh, kind of a disgusting smell to uh, <laughs> pop a beat off of a tire and have that in your face. But I'm going to disagree a little bit though. But I'm going to back up. I'm going to say fact because I have read about and heard about not necessarily the tire technician dismounting the tire, but the guy on the road. He gets the flat. He pulls off the freeway. The tire is very hot, and now you inject or fill that tire with this flammable compressed air. That is, I think, probably what he was talking about is not having that explosion. Not necessarily dangerous for the guy in the shop, but dangerous for the consumer possibly adding that air. Well, my first job, busting tires, I hated that stuff. So I made that story up to everyone I told. I said, what? oh, man, you could have killed me <laughs> changing your tire with that fix a flat in it. So uh, we're glad we give you a part of your Saturday, and we hope you, we lowered your tire anxieties. Thanks, Rob and Dan, for coming to help us out with tires. Tell us how to get in touch with the SNS Tire Shops. Then go to our website, tiresaz.com, and there's uh, links to uh emails that come directly to us or they can call our cell phones we're available all the time you can also catch them at bumper to bumper radio.com is a great resource and if you're looking for a shop like these guys uh, and you don't happen to be in their neck of the woods there's plenty of great shops at bumper to bumper radio.com while you're there be sure to like us on facebook you'll find our facebook link at the bottom left we appreciate you guys coming in and we look forward to being with you next week talk to you later <laughs>